at the shop this evening, we had a lot of comments when we made a couple splitter videos with this um, on how it was built. So Mike come down tonight and he's going to give us the runaround on how it was all put together, how he designed this thing. So take her away. All right. Well, I looked for a splitter that I wanted to buy but I couldn't find anything that was built that was anything close to this. I did find a great big ones that paper mills use for splitting eight, 10 foot logs that they chip, which wasn't what I was looking for. We have a lot of wood that we leave in the woods, we used to leave in the woods, we call them clunkers. I know a lot of guys comment and call them wolf trees. We did the same thing. And so because the outdoor wood burners become so popular in the last 10 years, I decided to try to market it, but I had to have a splitter that would do it. So I come up with this splitter here and I'll try and explain real quick details. I know you'll have a lot of questions, which is fine. Throw them in the comments, I'll try to answer them. But basically what I did is I started out, I had an old 1187 case color buncher that I parted out. I took this cylinder off from it. It was the tool cylinder, the one that lifted the head. It's a six and a half inch bore, three inch ram and it's a 48 inch stroke. And that's what I started with because I want to be able to do longer wood. And then the beam, the main beam here, it come from another producer that was a friend of mine. That is part of his Pro Pack Delimmer. It was a 353 Pro Pack that had bent, the beam bent, I think they're like 40 foot long. We had one of them delimmers too for a while. Anyhow, I bought like 20 foot of it, brought it back and we, we took and used the straight part. It is an eight by 12 tube steel, high tensile steel with a half inch wall. And anyhow, that was our basic that we started with. We had this old piece of steel here that we had laying around for a long time. Uh, I had a fabricator working for us at the time that we built this and this was all his work. And I kind of showed him what I wanted done. For the splitter itself, what we did, this is actually like a laminated piece. We took the center part is AR400 and the sides are just regular mild steel or inch and a half flat bar. And we took and we cut them off with a torch a little bit. And then we, we took and put it in our knife grinder and we ground it down till it was all one good edge on it. It is three foot long with two feet sticking out. The other one foot is tied into this tube steel for our, our main beam. It's, uh, we did a great job. The welder did a great job. It's never moved, it's never bent, it's never tweaked itself or nothing. And then behind that, we kind of copied the same design as our Cord King 48, which has this, uh, the, the additional split knives behind the main splitter. And we just have that right up and down. I wanted to go with a six way, we thought that, but once we got into splitting these big blocks, it's not even feasible because there's so many knots, it's difficult, it's dangerous, so we just stuck to a four way. This has the ability, I'll show you after a bit when we get it running, it goes down and the knives go underneath here so that we can use it as a single splitter. When we first built it, we started out, put a big old block on here, come in here, wouldn't not split, could not believe it. The whole beam was arching up and I thought, well, we're going to break it. And uh, the reason is because when you try to split these big knotty blocks, you got to have a point of entry, which is what this does. It kind of goes in first and it starts to open it up. This works, but not as well as what I really need to do. I need to take this section out again. It's just above my, my plate and uh, build a new part that comes out at a more aggressive angle down here a little lower. And just like uh, anything that'll they'll start to open the wood up. It takes a lot less power and once you do that it, it really makes a difference. We also put these splitting knives on an angle because the wood enters in here first so this point starts to split and then it does the rest of it. If this was blunt just like that it takes a lot of power. It busts up too much stuff. Then we had uh, wood, when it gets split, falls down here. We built a grate here, 
and uh, just the garbage falls through there and then, and then it goes on to our conveyor. When we built it, we did put our outriggers like we got these in, and they're adjustable. They come out so we can put all the weight, both sides do this. We built a, a big lift. That was one of the problems was a lot of splitters I've seen had lifts. A lot of them had them on the opposite side. You had to walk around, put the wood on there, lift it up, do your work. You had a little valve bank up here. And I said, that's not gonna work. And there was no room for the lift because it took all the room up and there's no room to stand. That's why they had them on the opposite side. I built this with enough room so that this is the operator station right here. And I'll show you, we, everything's right inside here. We've got our, our lift here. This runs our, our four-way head. This is our throttle. This is our, our cylinder, splitting cylinder. It's a return to center. Electric swish, just push it, push it whichever way you want to go. Returns to center. Yeah, so it's not any auto relay. We, we looked at doing an auto split and it's just too dangerous with these big of pieces that we're doing. So we got all this un engineered. When I took the measurements of my cylinder, I took it to a hydraulic supplier and I said I want to be able to use this for a splitter and I wanted certain um, times for the ram go in and out. So I end up talking to them and we set up a, a pump system and I'm going to show you that. The motor that I end up using is a 52 horse Isuzu motor come out of a street sweeper. I got that from my brother. It actually was burned. We had to work on that. We got it, got it going and it does well. So all we did is we come up with a three section gear pump. And I don't remember the details. I built this thing in 2009. I never wrote nothing down. I have to do this by memory, and it's <laughs> my memory's not like it should be. But anyhow, we got three sections here. These two pump the same amount, and this is a higher higher pressure we use on this. It, it pumps a lower amount. All the oil gets pumped into this manifold, and if you can see it, this manifold has a one-way valve. So all the oil is pumped that comes in here and it does their splitting. When it hits, a, I think it's 1100 PSI on the split, then this valve opens up and it dumps these two pump sections back to the tank. So then you're only running on one pump section. So you're not gonna kill your motor and your cylinder's not gonna move so fast that somebody gets hurt. That goes into this valve here which is currently set at, this is a pressure valve, 2200 PSI. Originally I set it at 3000, but it was too much, it was too dangerous. It was creating 90 tons of pressure. It's, it'll do the job, but I'm telling you, these knotty pieces of wood, when they let go, when it finally splits, it just blows them out there and it's too dangerous. So we quit that. We turned everything down and just <laughs> leave it at that. We, uh, we got electric uh, solenoid here, the same valve and electric solenoid that we use on the chippers on all the feed rollers. So all your hoses come in at the bottom and your sub plate and this is your valve and this is your solenoid and it just kicks the oil one direction or the other so you run your cylinder in and out. So there's no hydraulic uh, valves or anything handles to hang on to, just electric switch. It's quick, it's fast, it's simple, and it's a lot like what we're already using on chippers, so that's why we chose to go that way. The tanks, we built them ourselves. A hydraulic oil tank right here, it's a 100 gallon. That's our fuel tank over there, that's a 75 gallon tank. I put two 3,000 pound new axles underneath here when I built it, and I thought, well, that'll be plenty. When I got all done, I took it up to the gravel pit and weighed I was shocked. This thing weighs 7,000 pounds. It's solid. I don't think we'll ever wear it out. Okay, another thing that we had to do when we were building this, I'd like to have been able to put rollers. I'll go around the side. Um, you stay. I, I wanted to put like rollers or something to hold this head onto the beam. It would go around. 
But if I was to do that, I would eliminate my tables because they, they wouldn't be able to have anything be welded on the side of this beam to hold it or my lift. So we thought about it, come up with a piece of flat bar here. I can't remember the dimensions. I think they're like inch and a half by inch. And we just sandwiched them with this. We put the same plastic that we put in the bottom of our chip vans. That didn't work. End up putting brass in there now and that held up. Not enough bolts when we first did it. We kept breaking them. This should have a couple more put in it, but they're holding up. We put a piece of plastic underneath the head, the same as uh, we use on our chip van floors, and it's held up good. This thing currently has just about 2,100 hours on it, so you can see the wear and tear it's had. We welded our logo into our splitter head so everybody knows our wood when it comes to them. It's identifiable. We did have a problem with uh, when we got done, there was too much back pressure in the system. I took it to another hydraulic shop and we ended up putting this filter system in here which was a lot better and that worked. We also have a light here that works great. We split with this at night. I've been out late at night when uh, firewood season's hot and heavy. Had to run splitter so it'll, it'll work at night, it's not a problem. So anyhow, I'm going to fire it up and I'm going to show you a little bit how it works. Get the glow plugs are going. Comes a table. You can split a piece in half, throw it back down here, and work off of this table. And this is a gauge in here for our uh, split cylinder, a voltmeter, oil pressure, the fuel gauge quit working, water temp is a power meter, but I'll just show you, I'll rev, rev it up a little bit where we got our splitter pressure set at. thing is we never have to run the thing wide open. It does fine at half throttle, two-thirds throttle, it's fast enough. Once the oil gets warmed up it works great. We never put a cooler on it. I thought we might have to but I've kept an eye on it. This, Our gauge back here has a thermometer in it so we've always watched it. The hottest I've ever got is about 140 in a warm day splitting four or five hours with it. Kind of give you an idea what I think we've split with it. If we average two cords an hour, which would be pretty conservative, I know it's split at least 4,000 cords. And it's holding up really well. It was built in 2009, so it's going on eight years old. And we use it all the time. It's just about ready to go back out and be, get hooked up to our conveyor and we'll be using it again, so. And that's a nasty, nasty wood. All nasty big wood. John will have to take a video of the stuff. Sometimes if you're watching his videos, you might see some of the stuff that's getting thrown out from the slasher. That's what this thing splits. A lot of 24 to 30 inch wood diameter. 
Mm -hmm. We have split bigger, but you gotta have somebody to help you. It's just too big to handle. But this is 24 inches. I've had I've had wood that was 40 inches in diameter and split it before. It doesn't have a problem at all with that. So. We was running this with enough help. If you got somebody lining up all the blocks, we use pickaroons for those of you who know what pickaroons are to roll them on. If you got enough wood right here all the time and you got another man over here on this side helping you and just one guy splitting in the middle here, you can easily split five cords an hour if you don't run out of wood and you keep it coming in. And any smaller pieces about that size, if somebody just lays it on that table and just roll it over one push, one push, and you could be filling a truck pretty quick. But we've worked on Saturdays when we all get together uh, to fill our own wood stoves when we've cut for about three, three and a half hours and we split 15 cords with no problem. So it, it's done well. And maybe you'd say, why don't I build them? No way, this was plenty for me. I don't want to ever do it again. Somebody wants to do it, I'll give them some ideas, but I don't want to ever build one. And I don't think nobody would pay you what it's worth. When I got all done with it, I think I had close to 30,000 in it. It was more than I thought, but it's like once you start a project, you, you got to see it through. What you see today isn't what it was. It's had a lot of changes that you, you spent money on stuff, didn't work, you had to throw it away and start over with new ideas. But what we got right here is done well. And I also wanted to get it so that I didn't have to have a genius to run it. Anybody can run this thing as long as they don't get themselves hurt. But I mean, it's not complicated. It's simple. It will not usually break. And so we, we've made that happen. And I can put a couple guys out in the firewood yard and they can run it all day and it's not a problem. So. Oh, anything else you think of, John? Nope. He did it all. Well, Splitzilla. Yeah, that's a that's a name we come up with for it. <laughs> you know, we had a graphic design guy come up with the decals. We were real happy with that. So it's kind of got its own uh, place in our lineup out here. Yep. And so I have hauled it around. It, it tows real good behind a one-ton pickup, but I did try it with a half-ton and I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's too much weight. So, if you look underneath there, you'll notice them axles are bowed pretty good because there's a lot of weight on it. Yeah. Yep. Bent the other way. This, this thing is heavy. It'll be something that uh, my grandkids will be wearing out and running when I'm long gone. Mm -hmm. so. So there you go, there's how we built, how he built Splitzilla. It's a machine. <laughs>